Hello again, it's Kyle with Ledger. Um, I wanted to do something fun today and sort of show you something that I, I think a lot of tutorials don't show you, which is what is this recovery phrase? Um, I, I was watching Dan's how to get set up with your Nano X video, which I, I love, it's great. And I noticed at one point he actually shows you a real seed phrase. Like this is a real recovery phrase that was written down as part of his ledger devices setup. And the interesting thing to know is like the only thing that's happening when you're setting up a new ledger device from scratch and it generates you this recovery phrase, it is, it is generating you a very large random number. That is your cryptographic secret. And the whole premise of cryptography is that you have a long random number that nobody else has. And because you're the only one who knows that random number, that means you can sign transactions cryptographically using that number. Um, the way that the seed phrase works or this recovery phrase works is that that random number gets encoded as words to make it easier to write down. Like those words are just, it's the embodiment of a large number, but it's, it's very easy to make errors when writing down large numbers. It's less easy to make errors when you're writing down English words. That's why these word, this word list exists. But like, to be sure, this thing that you see Dan writing down here, that's just a large number. And that's the large number that his ledger device generated in a cryptographically random way upon setup. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you like, what is that word? This is a secret word that you should never use. And by the way, a lot of the things I'm gonna be doing in this video are really bad because I'm going to be taking this recovery phrase, I'm gonna be typing it into a computer. That's bad, don't do it. It destroys the purpose of the ledger, which is to keep your seed phrase. I keep using the term seed phrase and recovery phrase interchangeably. I like the term seed phrase, but it says recovery phrase in the sheet, so I will try to continue to call it recovery phrase. But the whole premise of this is that the ledger device's whole job is to keep that recovery phrase offline, off a computer, forever for the rest of your life life and if you do this correctly you never have to set up another recovery phrase again like one recovery phrase is good for life it's a secret that you know and as long as it stays secret you're good um, but here's a good example of a recovery phrase that's already on a computer it's been in a youtube video that's super public so i'm going to take this recovery phrase obviously not put any assets associated with it because anybody can spend my assets but i wanted to take you out here to a calculator what this is, this recovery phrase follows a standard called BIP39. Uh, it's like Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 39 or something to that effect. And I have this online calculator by Ian Coleman, which I just, I adore this thing. I use it all the time just to like remind myself how the math works. Now this, this feels a little bit like techy, a little bit nerdy or whatever, but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take these words which are extra tiny here, but I wrote them down. And I'm gonna paste them into this calculator and I'm gonna show you what happens. So let me grab them from over here. Paste. Invalid mnemonic, let's see, we got member frost diagram wise emerge. Member frost diagram wise emerge. Parrot viable small submit. Parrot viable small submit bring Adam in force, print, bring Adam in force, print, series property, series property, word, air, combine, huge team, combine, huge team, patrol, paddle, humble, normal, patrol, paddle, humble, normal. Well, that is an invalid mnemonic. You're tricky, Dan, you're tricking me. You use a fake mnemonic. Okay, well, scratch that. Let me just generate you a new word. Um, here you go. So here's, this tool has a nice ability to generate you a random code. Don't use this because, I mean, don't trust this website to be secure. It's online. It, I mean, who knows? They could be feeding you a, a recovery phrase that they record and wait for you to steal, like wait for you to put money into it and steal it out later. But let me, let me show you what's going on here. So this is a valid recovery phrase. This, this could very well be the recovery phrase your ledger generated at the beginning, but it won't be. I mean, this recovery phrase, I will guarantee you, has never been seen before by the world. Um, these, these numbers are so long that it is astronomically impossible to accidentally generate the same number as someone else. Like the odds of that happening are incredibly low. Like there's a whole video about how low are these odds actually, and it's very fun to watch. Um, 
Okay, so here you go. I've got this mnemonic that's 24 words, and here is the long number that it encodes. It really is just a long hexadecimal string, 256-bit number. Um, so then what do, what do we do with this? So it turns out that you can use this long number as a seed, a cryptographic seed, and there are these rules that you can use to generate crypto accounts based on this seed. So I'm I'm very comfortable with the Ethereum network. I like I like the look of the addresses. They they kind of make most the most sense to me. So I'm going to switch to the Ethereum derivation rules. And then you'll see here that there's a derivation path, which you may actually encounter this every now and then. It's like a hidden detail that you shouldn't have to care about, but this is a string that represents the rules, mathematical rules to get from that cryptographic seed down to your list of accounts. And by list of accounts, I mean, here you go. Um, this is the first five accounts for six accounts. You know, like there are infinite amounts of accounts you can generate from a cryptographic seed. And you'll wonder, like, I set up an account in Ledger Live. Then I went over to MetaMask, and MetaMask just showed me my first five accounts. And you're like, where did the rest of those five accounts come from? They didn't come from anywhere. They're actually mathematically calculated from your seed phrase. And you know, your ledger's job, its main job is to calculate that kind of stuff for you securely inside of the secure element on the device. But when asked, like, hey, ledger, what are the first five accounts, first five Ethereum accounts that can come out of the seed phrase, it will it'll return. Here are the first five public addresses that come out of the seed phrase. You'll see here that account zero, this first account, 0x029e has a, has a public and private key pair. And um, if you're not familiar with public and private key cryptography, don't worry about it, but just know that for this account, 0x29e, which is the address that you'll like know and it's yours and you'll be able to share with your friends and whoever, um, has this secret number specifically for that account. So if this number were to leak into public or be given to an attacker, they could only generate or dr drain the funds out of this account. They couldn't drain the funds out of account one here. They can only drain the accounts, the, the funds out of account zero. But th this is why when you ever see like a phishing website or a scam website, what they ask you for is they ask you for the seed phrase. And the reason is because this seed phrase leaks the account information for everything. It leaks the account information for all accounts that derive from this address and all private keys associated with those accounts. Um, and even more, maybe like more motivation to keep this number very secret is that not only does it leak all the account information for all of your Ethereum accounts, it'll leak the information for all of your crypto accounts, not just Ethereum. There's Bitcoin involved here. Let me find Bitcoin, here we are. So same seed phrase, same number generates the following Bitcoin accounts. Do, do, do. And each of those accounts could have unspent transaction outputs that have lots of Bitcoin associated with them. And there's the private key to sign those away. Um, so there's, there's a couple of things I wanted to get to here. One, it should be very important to know that this seed phrase cannot leak. You have to minimize the exposure you have on the seed phrase. Like every single place you put it, every Everywhere you move it has the opportunity for it to leak. So you need to keep this thing super, like, minimize risk. Um, I could put it in 1Password, right? Like, I could upload it to 1Password. I kind of trust the security on that. But can I say for sure that I trust the security on 1Password forever? Will it always be secret? What happens in 60 years when I've got these huge crypto bags and 1Password has a vulnerability that leaks the seed phrase that I put in there, you know, 60 years ago? Risky. The one thing I am certain will not get hacked is my notebook. My notebook is going to be offline forever. Um, and if you're worried about a fire or something like that, there are metal versions of notebooks that you can use, but um, like, you know, engraver kind of stuff or, uh, you know, billfolds. Um, but anyway, that was the one thing I wanted to get at. The seed phrase is important. Most of you already know that. The other thing is there's a there's a one-to-one -one linkage here. If I have... A, an Ethereum account. There is no way for me to swap out. Sorry, I got focus. Okay, yeah. There's no way for me to swap out which seed phrase goes along with this account. So I've seen a lot of people that start as MetaMask users, 
they buy a ledger and they're like, well, I want to keep my address. I just want to use a ledger instead. And the answer is like tough because this seed phrase, this one up here, always generates those accounts in that order every time. There's no way to change which seed phrase you're using associated with that account. And if this seed phrase has been on a computer, it's been exposed to the internet. Like, you know, you don't know that it's been safe uh, its whole lifetime. So there's just no way around it. When you set up, let's say you're using MetaMask, you like go, I know I want to get uh, serious about security. I want to get a ledger wallet and get set up. You want the ledger to generate you a new cryptographically random secure seed phrase, and you're going to have a new set of accounts associated with that new secure seed phrase. And what that means is that you need to actually emit messages to the blockchain saying, my old account is now transferring assets to my new account. Like you have to actually move the assets from the, the account associated with your old seed phrase to the account associated with your new seed phrase on your ledger. Um, so I guess that's like the second point I want to get at is that there's a there's a mathematical link between addresses and seed phrases, and new seed phrase means new addresses. That's that's how it works. So then astute viewers and people who have watched certain YouTube videos that I, I really hate <laughs> um, will ask like, well, why don't I just take my MetaMask seed phrase and upload it into my ledger? Like, why don't I recover a ledger wallet with the seed phrase from my MetaMask account? And it actually works. Like that is a, that's the beauty of standards. This is BIP 39. Ledger supports that. Uh, MetaMask supports that. All kinds of, like every wallet will support the BIP39 standard because this is the standard for mnemonic code seed phrases. Um, the problem is that, like, like I was saying before, you have to minimize exposure over time. So the MetaMask seed phrase has been on your computer, guaranteed. It's been in your Chrome local storage. You've perhaps typed it somewhere. You've copied it to your clipboard. Like Each of those things you do is adding an extra degree of risk. So you can say that there is a significant, or at least some amount of risk piled onto that seed phrase that makes it suspect at best. It's not like MetaMask is doing anything wrong cryptographically. The problem is that they can't do better than Chrome local storage when it comes time to store your seed phrase, which means that it's like, it can only get you to like a level three out of 10 on safety, whereas Ledger can get you to the 10 out of 10. So why not load your MetaMask seed phrase into Ledger? Well, it might be compromised. They're actually, there is a very big opportunity for people who find seed phrases through uh, malware, through attacks, through hacking, that they actually just, you know, they look at it, it doesn't have a whole lot of money on it, and they go, you know what, this person is likely to load this up with more money soon, let me just hang on to it. And they'll sit on the seed phrase for a long time and then wait for it to build up a significant amount of money inside and then drain it all of a sudden. So, like, that's scary. You could you could very well already be compromised with your seed phrase and not know it yet. And then when you, you know, later, 10 years later even, if that seed phrase came from somewhere unsafe to begin with and you load it up with money and it gets drained, you'll be like, well, how the hell did that happen? Well, you, you have to like think back, the entire history of my seed phrase has it ever been compromised. And while it may save you some gas money today, it may save you some trouble today to reuse the MetaMask account on your ledger device, it's not worth it in the long run for that reason. Like that account might actually already be compromised and you're just going to use it thinking it's protected by a ledger device. When in reality, whoever has your seed phrase has your money. Like that is, that is how it works ledger or not like ledger's job is to keep it offline. But if it's been online, then what is ledger's job in this point? Like it's been mishandled up to that point, even worse using your MetaMask seed phrase that might be potentially compromised on a ledger means you actually spread that compromise, that compromised seed phrase beyond just the Ethereum network, which is what MetaMask is primarily responsible for. And let's say you, you get into Cardano, you get into Dogecoin, you get into to, uh, Bitcoin, all things that, that ledger wallets support, no problem. You've suddenly, if that seed phrase leaked through MetaMask, you've suddenly lost your Dogecoin, you've lost your Bitcoin, you've lost your Cardano, you've lost all of your assets. It's super catastrophic. So that that's why there's a there's a video, probably the most popular video at the time of this recording, that says like how to set up uh, a ledger 
as a MetaMask user, and it says, set it up using your MetaMask seed phrase, and I'm just like screaming at this video, no, do not do that, it's so bad. Um, again, not do any fault of MetaMasks, like they're doing everything as good as they possibly can to keep that seed phrase safe in Chrome local storage on your computer. So like computers are messy places, you can run arbitrary programs. Um, so like that's, that's why I would recommend that. So like the last thing I wanna point out, and I know this video is probably getting a little long at this point, but maybe this is helpful to somebody. Um, there is no, um, there's nothing Ledger Live is doing special here. When you go to say add account in Ledger Live, it's not like registering an account with the blockchain. It's not saying, hey, Ethereum network, here's a new account to add. These accounts are just numbers. They're addressed numbers and they all sort of exist. There's just no transactions associated with them. Um, what Ledger is simply doing is it is calculating account one. It's calculating account two. It's not like registering them. So these accounts already exist and they don't exist. They're just numbers. And those numbers will always generate in the same order every time. When you load in a seed phrase, you'll always get the same accounts in the same order, which goes to show you why this set of 24 words is sufficient. It's enough to recover all of your accounts on a new ledger device. Buy a new ledger. On the little screen, when you set up a new device, it says, would you like to generate a recovery phrase or would you like to use a recovery phrase that you already have? Um, and you, you might wonder, like, how is it that these, this small set of words is enough to get all of my accounts across all of my blockchains? Well, it's because this BIP39 standard has a set of math functions that says, here's how to get from mnemonic code to all of the accounts that are associated with that mnemonic code, including public keys, private keys, addresses. I mean, there's so much information you can get out of this across all blockchains. Um, so I hope this helped clear things up. Um, I'll probably end up needing to refer to some of these concepts in future videos. So it's probably good that I recorded this down. Um, hopefully it's not terribly long and maybe I can add some chapters to this, but uh, thanks for sticking around to the end. Um, hope this helped. Thanks.